Hi again, welcome back to our video. So for today, we will talk about qualitative approaches. So, okay, for the first approach we have for qualitative, this is action research. So when we say action research, it is used to find and solve one or more problems or practical issues that are of importance to the participants in their own settings. So what are the basic steps of action research? First is that identifying the problem in a question, group conduct meeting or brainstorming, joint analysis of research data or information, next is taking action to rectify the problem or eliminate the question. So when we say action research, this is to find and solve one or more problems. So there are some issues with, or there are some topics with multiple issues or multiple problems. So this is how we do action research. So it's like, doing one research and solve everything under that certain concern so that's the main reason why it needs to it you know the research or action research needs to be more uh, needs more brainstorming needs more analysis needs more investigation and identifying the root cause or the problem and come up with a solution so there are certain concerns that or problems or topics with a lot of issues that needs to be resolved as well, a lot of issues that needs to be tackled, a lot of issues that needs to be addressed as well. And action research is the best research or qualitative approach to resolve one or more problem or particular issue. Okay, so next. Number two is the historical research. So when we say historical research is that studying, understanding, and interpreting past events through interpretation of documents. So categories of historical data, that is primary or secondary. Then ways by which authentic authenticity of data may be examined. It can be external criticism or internal criticism. So when we say historical research, if you are a type of person who, you know, who's more into history, then this is the best qualitative approach or research for you. So historical research. So you are digging more of a history, what exact thing that happened before, what are the things that we need to, you know, to check for in our history. So we have studying the past. So the challenge here is that you have to be really knowledgeable in creating a research or historical research. Because like I said, you cannot really change the past. So what you have from the past, it should be clearly delivered in your research. So you shouldn't change any history or any of our history. You cannot even fabricate the results or you cannot even fabricate the, you know, what exactly happened from the past. So you need to um, make sure that you need to establish your credibility and show all your researches and gathered a lot of information in his doing a historical research, okay? So for when we say external criticism, it is a process by which historians determine whether a source is authentic. So you need to check, of course, as a historical research, you need to make sure if your um, research or the information that you gathered are all authentic or by checking the validity, of course, of the source. So how will you check the validity of the source? You need to make sure if the book that you gathered are based from facts or not as a researcher you have you know you have the ability to spot if it's um, if it's legit or le legit or not so you need to as a researcher of a history you need to spot or determine or the, the checking of validity of your research and of course for the internal criticism it is the reliability of authenticated source after it has been subjected to external criticism. So if you think that, um, you know, for in the during the external criticism, as you check it, this is legit. So the, the reference is legit, it is reliable. So you can also need to internal criticize how how does it what is the process for that so for example you receive you have your book with you so you already test that the book is reliable so it is you know it is published by an author with credibility 
So, you need to now examine the content of the book. You need to make sure if the content of the book are reliable or not. So, that's internal criticism. You are checking or you're digging more of the book. The inputs or the knowledge inside the book. Are these information accurate? Are these information correct? So, you cannot just check the, you know, the background of the book or the reference itself, but you also need to dig more of the explanation of this um, or the information inside the book or the reference itself. So, yeah, it is really important for us in a sense that, of course, be, there are a lot of people who will read and rely your rely on your research. So, we have to make sure that we are doing you know our best to make sure that all information are accurate okay so next we have the primary and uh, secondary source so i guess you already have an idea about primary and uh, secondary source right for the primary of course that is the main right and the secondary it is the secondary or not the main but uh, how do we say it is a primary source no so for primary sources we can consider like journals letters diaries what else speeches um, books newspapers magazine government publications those are the things that we can consider as you know primary so it's like an original document so when we say primary is like the original document original manuscript um, original interviews data or records that we can use for um, you know empirical study okay when we say earlier it's empirical study it's more on the you know direct experience or when we say it it is also about you know observation so that's the primary okay so it's like uh, clinical reports or case studies from research or dissertations of professionals so those are primary right so when we jump into secondary sources those are articles from journals we have bib um, biographies book reviews documentary films essay literary criticism so why do we say that it's secondary in primary that is the original copy for the secondary there there is already people who or there are already people who you know conducted a review about it for example the jose rizal book let's say the noli metangere noli metangere is the original book and then we have the the secondary could be the analysis of the novel Noli Metangere. So meaning to say there's already someone who created an interpretation for you and you used it for your data analysis or you use it for your research and that can be considered as secondary. Okay. You get it? From the primary is the original. For the secondary, there's already someone who make an interpretation of it and you use it as your source of information so that is secondary okay next ethnography so when we say ethnography it is the studies of participants in their natural culture setting so we can say that the steps are entering the setting and gains acceptance collating data further refines observation and interpretation um, research reports so those are the uh, step. So what do we mean by this um, ethnography when we say that studies uh, participants in their natural culture or setting? So how can we say that? When we say uh, ethnography, it is like, you know, a classic example is we can also consider anthropologists, which are, you know, traveling from island to island, living within the society and, you know, doing an observation. Or, yeah, maybe we can make it simple, like when we say ethnography, it started with studying people in their own environment, right? So, you're like um, checking the culture, beliefs of, you know, of people, and then you use it for your research. So, uh, through these methods, you can also be a participant as a way of observation, face-to-face -face interviewing. That's ethnography. So you visit one place and then you interview person living there. You also experience what is happening. You also experience the face-to-face -face interview. You observe. So that's ethnography. Okay. So 
yeah most mostly this is descriptive so that you you know because you are recording the experiences and observing the experiences of people so that's ethnology next uh, grounded theory. So when we say grounded theory, it aims at deriving theory from an analysis of multiple stages of data collection. So a constant comparison analysis helps to identify um, commonalities and an in integration of participants, key views on a research topic. So how can we say or what is grounded theory research. So why is it part of the qualitative? So when we say uh, grounded theory, so some people are saying that it's GT. So it's like a research method uh, concerned with a generation of theory. Okay. So when we say grounded, it is a data that has been systematically collected and analyzed. Okay. So it's like a combination of two words. So when we say grounded, it's like, um, you know, a filtered or a collection of data that has been analyzed systematically. And when we say theory, of course, it's a, you know, it's a study. It has been, um, you know, checked, cl classified or clarified, whatever. So it is used, uh, it is basically used to un uncover things, most especially in social uh, relationships and behavior of people. So it's like uncover. When we say uncover, it's like, you know, a, a exposing something towards um, social interaction or social relationship, okay? So, um, for an instance, let's say when we say social relationship, we can also talk about why people are resigning, why why the employees are, you know, are not happy, why employees are frustrated at work. So, you can use that as a topic for a grounded theory wherein it involves social communication, social interaction with other people. Now, so in examines the result to discover the root cause of a problem and arrive with a present solution. So that's how that is grounded theory. Okay, next, Phenomen phenomenological approach. Okay, phenomenological approach is aims to describe the essence or lived expertise of the phenomenon. So back to the things themselves or bracketing. So I guess we already, you know, talked about phenomen phenomenological <laughs> earlier research. So yeah, I am having a hard time reading this, you know, without buffering. Phenom phenomenological approach. Yeah. So basically, of course, this is part of the qualitative research that is very evident because it helps us to describe uh, experiences in life. You know, it, it helps us experience, uh, you know, experiences of an individual and um, how this phenom phenomena affected the lives of people. So when we say phenomena earlier is like um, an event or something that exists when we say phenomena. So if there's something existing, if there is an event, then meaning to say there's something going on, there's something happening. So how this phenomena affects the lives of these people, how this phenomena affects the, you know, the, yeah, the lives, how the lives of people, the lives of every individual. So yeah, this is phenomenological approach. Okay. All right. Again, we have the qualitative approaches. So I guess you learned a lot from these qualitative approaches and maybe you can consider one to use as an approach to your PR1 research. And again, if you have questions, just let me know. If anything's clear, then just, you know, let me know as well. And yeah, just feel free to message me anytime if you have concerns and we'll just meet each other in our consultation. Thank you so much for your time and for your effort watching this and bye-bye. Um,